Today I want to talk just for a few minutes. Get your notepads out. It wouldn't be on the screen because I got this 8.15 this morning. So I put this teaching together between 8.15 and quarter to 9. So let's look at this. We want to talk today on the purpose of the Pentecost experience. And then uh, partnership with Pentecost. That's the subtopic. So we still stay in with partnership, but we're talking about partnership with Pentecost or partnership with Holy Spirit. All right, so let's look at this. Let's establish this first. Pentecost is not an event. Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is an experience. Pentecost is not an event, even though it happened and was an eventful experience, but Pentecost was and is an experience. So you can call your church Pentecostal, great God Pentecostal, uh, apostolic Pentecostal, whatever. You can build or start a denomination and call it the Pentecostal movement. But Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is and was an experience. Pentecost is the Christian festival celebrating the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples of Jesus after his ascension. Held on the seventh day after Easter or seventh Sunday, sorry, after the resurrection. So it is 50 days after the resurrection of Christ. So Pentecost has to do, Elder Ferguson, with 50, 50 jubilee celebration let's look at a, a few verses acts chapter 20 reading from the 21st verse to the 23rd verse and then we're going to slip into acts chapter 2 reading from the first verse this is the pentecostal uh, chapter or a few verses that shows us what happened in the upper room acts chapter 2 and 21 all right this is after jesus got up. He's ascended and this is the experience. The disciples were hiding out because they were afraid of the Jews. So Jesus said to them again, when he shows up, bust up in the wall, didn't knock on no door, just came in. In his glorified body. So Jesus said to them, again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he, watch this, breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Watch this. If you forgive the sins of any, if of any, they are forgiven. They are forgiven them. If you retain, retain the sins of any, they are retained. So he's connecting the breathing and the, the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit with forgiveness of sin. So the Bible said he breathes on them and say, receive Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, reading from the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and they were where? In one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. It did not only fill the house where they were sitting, but it filled them. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? Fire. 
One sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Bible said they were all in one place. They were all on one accord. Then there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were. Would fill the physical house, fill the temple. Let me say that one more time. Would fill the physical house, fill their house. Let me say it one more time. They were all in one place. They were all on one accord. Then there came a sound from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind. The Bible said in John, he breathed on them. Breath is wind. He breathes on them. In the upper room, Holy Spirit fell. It was as a rushing mighty wind. And it said it filled the house where they were. And then it filled them. God don't only want the Holy Spirit to come among us. But he want the Holy Spirit to come in us. Understand this now. When you get in worship and that's why when you come to church. You come to church you don't gaze. Because Holy Spirit comes among us. You, you up in worship. You celebrate in God and you enter in his gates with worship and thanksgiving. And all of a sudden you feel goosebumps all over your body. You came in heavy and you feel this weight lift off you. That's Holy Spirit that came among us. But if you're going to walk in victory in every area of your life, he needs to come in you. So it's not good enough for him to just come among us. We want him to come in us. May I say this to about a hundred of you? A whole lot of believers, a whole lot of so-called Christians, only experiencing him externally. They haven't yet experienced him internally. If you only look to experience him externally, it's very easy for you to get stuck in religion. And you want an experience, an external experience. And that's why persons who are more concerned about works, who are more concerned about day and clothing and all of the works, these are people who only experience him externally, but not yet experience him internally. Because internal experience gives you relationship, not religion. Write this down. What is Holy Spirit? Not what is. Who is Holy Spirit? Write this down. Who is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is not a thing. Holy Spirit is a person. The person of the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He is a person. So who is Holy Spirit? Write this down. He is a part of the Trinity. God is three in one person. God, that's what make him God. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God, he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You think you're smarter than God? You are three in one. You are three in one. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Your spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Spirit communes with God. Soul and body communes with humanity. You smarter than God. God created you. 
What make him God is that he can be three in one. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three of them were at creation. Three of them were in the creation story. And the Bible said, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Who he's talking to? Son, Holy Spirit. Let us make man and the word. And Jesus was in the beginning with God. And the word became flesh and dwell among us. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So you have God who spoke the Son and say, Son, let's make man. And let's do it in our image and after our likeness. And then he opens his mouth and he starts creating things. That was the Son. Because Christ is the Word. So he opens his mouth and the Word began to make things. And God said, bang. And God said, bang. And God said, bang. And everything God said, he saw. He was talking word. He was talking his son. And then the Bible says, watch this. Him and the son form man from the dust of the earth. And he breathes in man. The breath of God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, breathe on them and say, receive Holy Spirit. And the wind came in the house where they were and filled the house. He breathes in man and man became a living soul or a speaking spirit. In God who looks on nothing and declare let there be and everything he said he saw and the Bible said and the spirit of God hovered upon the face of the water. So you see in the creation story God Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You see it in the New Testament or in the dispensation we call grace. A period of time when God deals with his people. So God sent his son. Stands out of heaven. Jesus comes up out of the water. And then the spirit of God. Here it is. Descended upon him like a dove. And God spoke out of heaven. And said that's my boy. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's my boy. That's my boy. And the Bible said, and the word became flesh and dwell among us. And then, then Jesus finished his assignment. All he needed was three, three years. Finished his assignment. And when his assignment was finished, he, he says to his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. <laughs> you ain't got to worry I got you I got you I got you God did what God had to do I already did what I had to do when he said it was finished he was finished with his assignment and now it's time for the Holy Spirit to come and do his thing can somebody shout glory to God hallelujah he says he says he says hey 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 I'm gonna leave y'all the disciples them start tripping where you going he said, man, y'all ain't got to worry, man. I will not leave y'all comfortless. Holy Spirit means paracletes. It means a helper. It means somebody that comes alongside of me. And help me along the way. Is that, is that Eden bag? Where's Eden bag? Where's a comforter? You have a bottle? Bring a bottle for me. He said, hey, say, you don't get to trip out. You don't get to trip out. You don't get to trip out. You ain't got to trip out. I got you. I will not leave you by yourself to deal with this crazy world. 
You ain't got to wait. Don't trip up, man. Because see now, Jesus is walking with them. They see in miracle signs and wonders. He's providing for them. They needed to pay their taxes. And they tripping out because they ain't got no money. Jesus said, okay, go down to the sea. Hallelujah. Throw your line out. And the first fish that comes up on your line, open his mouth. Take the money out of his mouth and go pay that. Because I promise you, you ain't got to worry if Jesus is with you. He'll supply all your needs. Can I get somebody to shout glory in the house? So you can imagine walking with a man. You left everything to follow and he's providing for you, making a way for you, kicking doors open for you. You're seeing miracles, signs and wonders and he just walked with you for three years. You experience all of those supernatural things and he's going to tell you I'm going. Where can you go? I left everything to follow you. And you talking about you going. He said, listen, I'm going to send my comforter. And he's going to be just as bad as me. Whatever I do, he going to do. So watch this. With, you know, milk in my granddaughter thing? Just water? <laughs> so you got to make a milk. All right, so picture this as Jesus. No, it's Jesus. What should have been in it was milk, though. Because the word of God is considered milk. So this is Jesus. So this is who walked with disciples for three years. This is the real McCoy. They're experiencing Jesus. Word in him. The vessel of God, the glory of God is in him. Everything we need is in him. He going to say he going. Jesus said, man, hold on, don't trip out. I got a replacement. So whenever you feel hungry, watch, watch this, watch this. Whenever you think you're hungry. Because you don't push this in the baby mouth. To replace the food. You put the bottle in the baby's mouth. To give the baby food. But now the baby teeth is cutting. The gum is acting crazy. Glory to God. The baby think the baby is hungry. And the baby is uncomfortable. And the baby is hot. And the baby is frustrated. And the baby teeth. Hallelujah is on edge. And all this crazy stuff. And the baby is crying and disturbing everybody. You know what you do? Push the comforter. See what we We are comforter. Put a. Take that finger out your mouth. See? She, she said, You don't want a second finger. Come on, you ain't want a second finger, so you know what you do? You take the comforter and put the comforter, put the comforter in the mouth for Papa, and put the comforter in her mouth, and now she ain't got to put a finger in her mouth. She ain't hungry, but she got some comfort. And that's what Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah. When Jesus leaves, he puts the comforter in your mouth and says, I got you covered. You ain't got to cry about it. You ain't got to trip about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got you. So he's called the comforter. What is baptism? In the Holy Spirit. Write these few things down. Baptism means to immerse. Submerge. It means to go under. I like this one. To be controlled by. Then the Bible said they are the led. Thank you, baby. Thank you. They don't let. I ain't getting you nothing for that. <laughs> You're going on vacation. You don't get your vacation money. <laughs> so, so, so. Hey. What? What? To be led. It, it don't mean to manipulate. It means to control. It means to lead or control or to be controlled by. So baptism has to do with immerse, submerge. 
It means to go under. In this church, we put you under. We don't sprinkle you. You need to go under. <laughs> Crazy self. Go under. Keep you down for a little while too. All right. Go under. Immerse. Submerge. Submerge. It means to go under. Let's look at four different types of baptism. Baptism. Submerge. Submerge. Immerse. To be controlled by. Let's look at a few. Baptism experience. Write this down. Baptism into repentance. Baptism into repentance. That's what happened in Acts t John 20 when he breathes on them and say receive Holy Spirit. That's baptism. Baptism into repentance. This is water. Under his water. Baptism into repentance. So you were a mess before salvation. When you accept Christ, salvation. That's you. Then you have something called water baptism. Water baptism is your outward confession from an inward belief. So whatever I believe internally, I express it externally when I go down to the water to be baptized. It means I'm now dead from sin and I'm alive to righteousness. That's what water baptism is. Then you have, this is called Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Leave that right there for a bit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. Then you have this one. You didn't know about this one. Baptism by fire. So you got two baptism by fire. The first one is when you, when you, when you begin to, that's what happened in, the, in, the, in Acts chapter 2. They, they, it was as fire rests on them. All this fire blazing around here, that's prophetic. Not to bring judgment, just to let you all know that fire don't play. And why would it come during this time? If you're going to get victory in your life, you need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. The evidence is speaking in unknown tongues. And watch this one. Baptism by fire. This has to do. Y'all didn't experience this. Y'all who saved and accepted Christ as Lord and personal Savior, you don't have to experience this baptism by fire because this baptism by fire has to do with judgment. If you don't accept Christ as Lord and personal Savior, you will be judged by fire. Your works will be judged by fire. That's the next level. Now that's not going. That's not going. That's you're not going to burn for eternity because you have accepted Christ. That gives you eternal life. But those who haven't accepted Him will experience judgment by fire. Mm -hmm. Write this down. I'm just about through. Write this down. There's only one Holy Spirit. But there are different characteristics, watch this word, attributes or dimensions. Let me say that one more time. There's only one Holy Spirit, one God, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of, all, of, of us all. So there's only one God, there's only one Spirit, there's only one Son. So there's only one spirit on, of us being made to drink of that same spirit. There's only one spirit. One. There are different 
dimension, attributes, or characteristics. I'm only one person. I have a spirit, I have a soul, I have a body. I have one car. One car. Oh, and I like my Mercedes boy. Listen to me. Don't care what nobody say. Get the car that makes you smile. Hey, don't know the new car you got? Makes you smile. Martha, the car you get, wait till you can afford it so you can get the car that makes you smile. You work hard. Get the car. Don't care what nobody say. Get the car that makes you smile. When you're sitting at your grin. You feel good about yourself. I buy a Mercedes, I wait it, and I get the car that makes me smile. And if you ain't smiling, that's your business. But when I pull it on that park a lot, <laughs> and you get the car that makes you smile, when you don't work hard at RBDF, you want to sit in that clean. Mm-hmm. Make you smile. The thing about the car, though, think about the car, Elder Ferguson, you buy your wife. The only thing she's going to do in that car is drive it. All she wants is drive, reverse, and neutral. Pop. The only way she take advantage of Bluetooth, if Nardo go in that car and hook up her phone with the Bluetooth, or if when she got it, they show her some features of that vehicle when she got it from the BMW place. The car that makes me smile, I ain't care about all them other things. All I need is drive, park, Bluetooth, Luther. You'll get that on your way out. The camera feature that when I reverse, the camera feature show up, show me reversing. If I get too close to somebody, I peep, 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 peep. And I still just reverse straight into it. Some of you be so caught up, you didn't even hear the peep, 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 peep. So you got the one that goes, you got the camera in the front. So when you go, you go too close, you peep, 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 peep. It got automatic brakes. So one time the thing breaks, what, what, what happened? It's because you got the car, but you didn't read the manual. And if you get something that can benefit you on a whole new level, hallelujah, and you don't read the manual, you will not enjoy it to its fullness. Oh, I'm trying to help y'all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, you just, want, you just want the biceps and the triceps from the man. You ain't read the manual. You ain't really study him to see what he's all about. You ain't really study her to see what she's all about. So all you worry about is the shape. If that shape don't work, glory to God, after a while, when she start having children, you ain't going to uh, 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 access the other areas of her and the other parts of him that brings joy to your life and pleasure to your life. And the problem with the church is y'all don't know how to take advantage of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So what's happening in the body of Christ is y'all only want one part of him. Y'all just want speaking tongues and you want the power to work through you. Hallelujah. But there are different parts of the Holy Spirit. There are different dimensions, different attributes that I'm going to give you today. Because what's happening in the church is as long as I get the power, I could get money and I could get prestige and I could get recognition. Well, let me help you with this. Fill up the sauce who glory to God was operating with the spirit of witchcraft one day he was delivered and then G, then who, who it was Peter began to walk in the power and demonstration of the spirit of God the real authentic spirit hallelujah and then Philip who got saved but didn't get the power glory to God say how can I receive what you got hallelujah he wanted what Peter had so that he can go back and practice witchcraft with the Holy Spirit. He wanted to make money. Glory to God. So Peter rebuked him and said, your gift perish with you. Y'all need to say you're nothing in here because a whole lot of people only want one side of the Holy Spirit. Give me power so I can prophesy and get some money. But the Holy Spirit got more So the reason why a whole lot of people got power is because you jump over all of the different attributes 
So you got power, but still cussing. You got power, but still sissying. You speaking in tongues, and yes, you fasting, and the gifts of the Spirit is working in your life. Let me help you with something with the gift. The gift and the call of God is irrevocable. I can be a prophet and don't have the Holy Ghost. I can prophesy without the Spirit of God on the inside of me because I have the gift of God that came from God at conversion or came from God when I came into the world. Every good and every perfect gift came from above. I say you got a whole lot of people who want to see the gifts of the Spirit so that they can get money from you. But if you follow them home, they don't have no life. So, a few things. Let me, let me lead you up to the upper room. You ready to go up to the upper room? Okay, let me show you. A few things you need to know about the Holy Spirit. The first thing Holy Spirit does, watch this, is he draws you. He draws you. That's what Holy Spirit does. You don't have the power to draw anybody. Holy Spirit draws you. When he ready for you, he'll get you at the club. Get you at the bedroom. Get you at the bar room. When he ready. That's why, that's why, see, see, if you shando, if you understand how Holy Spirit work, you'll go to bed. Watch your children acting crazy. You'll go to bed. Watch your wife or your husband acting crazy. He out there in the club doing foolishness. Let me tell you how you pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, draw him to you. Convict him of sin and righteousness. And if you keep living right and keep praying right, he could be drawing him. He could be drawing him. He could be drawing her. He could be... Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me give you all, let me give you a word. John 6 and 4. Y'all okay? No one come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. So Holy Spirit draws you. Draws you. Draws you. So this Holy Spirit, this you, empty, full of sin, same vessel, he ain't changed my body, same vessel. When he went to the wedding, did he tell them replace the empty bins? He didn't, right? What did he say? Bring the same water pot. No, no. You know what that, that water pot? Um, in Kiania, you say preach wells. <laughs> that same, th 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 that same water pot that he told them to bring was the same stinking water pot that the Jews used to wash their hand in. The Bible said this was the purifying of the Jews. They used to wash their foot in that. They used to wash their hand in that. You only say you're nothing. How much man wash their hand up in you? How much people walk on you? How much drugs dirty you up? Glory God. How much liquor had you all stinking and nasty? Y'all come up in church looking like you all of that. You was all mess. He did not replace the vessel nail. What he did was put something in it. 
He cleaned it up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He said the same pot, those same vessels that they clean their foot in, they wash their hand in, they wash their mouth in, that's it, they wash their face in. He said, I want that same vessel. Bring it right here. Hallelujah. Take the stuff out of it. Put some water in it. Glory to God. Put some water in it. Put some water in it. And then when they start drawing, hallelujah, the water that was in there, that was purified by the Spirit of God, turned from water into wine. Can somebody shout, he's about to turn me. He's about to turn me. He's about to, I say, he's getting ready to turn you. He turned them from water into wine. And they go there to draw out the water and taste it. And it was no longer water, but it was wine. The same vessel. The same vessel. So, so, hold that for me. Hold that for me. The same vessel that's in the club. The same vessel in the bar. Same vessel doing foolishness. It was. It was. It was. It was. You stinking dirty self, you lying self, you 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 this and your that, you whole monger and stuff. Paul said, "I was once a blasphemer, I was once a proudful man, I was once a murderer, but I did everything in unbelief." One day I was on the road to Damascus, getting ready to persecute the church, but he draw me. He draws us, and he takes the same vessel. Because he not only draws you, just the next point, he saves you. He draws you, and now you're saved. You write down these points because I'm finished. He saves you. He saves you. You're saved now. You're saved. You're saved. I ain't going back there no more. You're saved. Watch this. Same water, same spirit, same vessel, different experience. Say, he not only draws you, he saves you. Watch this. John 16 and 8 says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So he draws you, he saves you. Watch this now. He draws you, he draws you, he saves you, mm. he seals you. Write that down, write that down. Y'all ain't writing. He, 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 he draws me. He saves me. He seals me. Watch this one now. He sanctifies me. You know what the word sanctify means? It means he set me aside. He sets me aside. See, see, that's why I tell y'all, these people want power. See, no, 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 no. You should not want power without sanctification. <laughs> That's what it means when he said the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. It means that your drunken husband, if you save, it's only a matter of time for him to come. Because once you save, he's sanctified. That word sanctify means to be set apart. Your children, once they're born into this righteous family, they are set aside. That's why the prodigal son, when he left the house, he had to come back to the house because he was set aside for a time. To, oh, y'all ain't going with me. 
That's the person to the left and right of you and say, my package is set aside. My, my Boaz set aside. My Esther set aside. My career set aside. Some money set aside for me. I declare and decree that that thing that is set aside to you is going to find you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout set aside. And once it's set aside, the devil can't touch it. We preach everything, son, but we don't preach sanctification. Sanctification has to do with holiness. It has to do, come on now, it has to do with being set aside or set apart. We preach everything else in the church. We tell you how to get a car. We tell you how to get a house. We tell you how to get a man. We tell you how to get a woman. But we don't tell you that the Holy Ghost come in you so that you can be set aside and holy unto God. Let me tell you how you know that you have been drawn, that you have been saved, glory to God, hallelujah, and you have been sanctified. Because how you act when you were there before he draws you, and now he saves you, and now he sets you apart, hallelujah, you will not feel comfortable doing the same thing that you did when you were there. That's a sign that you're sanctified. One time ago, I'll cuss you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. One time ago, I just want a little bit of wine. I want the whole case. One time ago, I will rush upon you, tell you about your mama, your daddy, your sister, and your brother. Glory to God. But because I am sanctified, because I'm set aside, hallelujah, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things shall pass away. Behold, all things shall be made new. Somebody shout, I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. That's how you know you say for real. That's how you know you have Holy Spirit. Because even though you ain't got it all together, you don't cuss the way you used to cuss. You don't sex the way you used to sex. You don't drink the don't look at me like that. Drink the way you used to drink. You don't party the way you used to party. See, Olivia Nixon acting like she ain't know what I'm talking about because she grew up in church, been in church all her life. But there's some of us in here who ain't, who been to church, but church wasn't in us. Some of us was nothing. We were nobody, but we got drawn, we got saved, and now we sanctify. Set aside. Set aside. Set aside. Meet for the master's use. I'm set aside. There's some things I can't do because I'm set aside. There's some places I can't go because I'm set aside. And understand, the more you get in word, the more you get in prayer, the more Holy Spirit will keep you to himself or come on somebody. Hallelujah, there's some things you ain't gonna wanna do. You ain't gonna have no taste to do. Stop pushing yourself to try to keep up with people who still out there. You have been drawn, honey. Hallelujah, you have been saved. Y'all ain't going. The first one is what? Drawn. The second one is what? Say. The next one is what? Did I say seal? And I talk but sealed? I didn't talk but seal. I didn't talk but seal. Man, you got to understand you seal until the day of redemption. It means that no one could pluck you out of his hands. Once he draw you, save you, hallelujah, seal you and sanctify you, glory to God, there's a mark on you. Y'all didn't hear, there's a mark on you. I said there's a mark on you. You can run but you can't hide. That's what he meant when he said I'm married to the backslider. Because once you come to me, I draw you, you are saved, you are sealed, you are sanctified. Can somebody shout, I try to run. But every time I run, he find me. I'm sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout seal. I got the mark of God on my life. Now we're in the upper room. Because he draws us. He saves us. He seals us. Feel that. Feel that? Isn't that wet? 
soak, seal, seal, sanctified. Now this is where we go in the upper room now. Because Holy Spirit saves you, draws you, saves you, seals you, sanctifies you, and then he empowers you. That's what it is. This is the experience. This is what happened in the upper room. Those who were drawn, those who were saved, those who were sealed, those who were sanctified, was filled. <laughs> no, let me, let me, let me, let me say that again. Y'all working on my nerve, man. <laughs> Y'all working on my nerve, man. Y'all so slow, though. <laughs> Holy Spirit draws you. <laughs> same one who draws you, saves you. The same one who saves you, seals you. The same one who seals you, sanctify you. The same one who sanctify you. Okay, okay, let me try that one more time. Let me try that one more time. Let me try that one more time. Go back over there. Go back in the club. Well, you'll never go back in the club. Even if you go back in the club, you're going to be comfortable in the club. He does what? Draws him. Saves him. <laughs> Seals him. Sanctifies him. Eh! Go now in Jerusalem. And then when you get up there, wait for the promise of the Father. You're going to experience another part of him that you have never experienced. All I want you to do is get in position. Go up in the upper room. Just go there and wait. Y'all just sing the song, The Promise is on the Way. And he said, just go there, hang out a little bit. Y'all just get your head in the game and just wait. And the Bible said, we don't know how long they were waiting, but they were waiting. And they were waiting, and they were waiting, and they were waiting. And watch this, y'all. The Bible said, the place shake. God, I'm Zion. I feel it. The place shake. And then the Bible said, hallelujah, glory to God. There was a... Let me hear that sound. Let me, let me hear that sound. And, and I came by to tell 150 of you, get ready. I hear a sound coming. Give me a mic. Let me get up out of here. Let me get a mic and get up out of here. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Let me help you again. Watch this. He draws you. Mm -hmm. He watch, he watch this. He, he, he saves you. He, he seals you. He sanctifies you. And then he said, now go wait. Because you got another dimension. Go wait. Because you're getting ready to experience another part of me. Y'all didn't hear nothing. What I said. See, somebody said that, 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 that there's a part of God that heals. A part of God that provides. A part of God that, that, that delivers. No, honey. There's no part of God that does anything. He don't come in parts. He is your healer. He is your provider. He is your battle axe. He is your joy. He is your peace. When I get God, I don't get a part of him. I get every part of him. Can somebody shout glory? When I get him, I get him. And what's this, y'all? He draws you. I feel like going on vacation now. I think I should go today. Hallelujah. He draws you. He saves you. What's this? He seals you. Hallelujah. He sanctifies you. And then he said, go wait. Because I'm getting ready to let you experience another part of me. And whilst they were waiting, the place started shaking. And the Bible said there was a sound. 
of a rushing mighty wind. I declare a wind is getting ready to blow in your house. A wind getting ready to blow on your job. A wind getting ready to blow in this nation. I feel God in here. And the Bible said, watch this. Hallelujah. The wind started blowing. The place started shaking. And there was a sound. And the Bible says that it filled the house. It, it, it filled. I say it filled. I say it filled. I say it filled the house. Then all of us get on one accord. And if all of y'all were standing praising, he might just come because he only came in the house. Because everybody was on one accord. Look at your neighbor say neighbor you came in here one way if we do it right you can go back another way somebody shake your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know what you need from God but I need God to fill me afresh can I get somebody to shout glory watch this y'all Watch this. There's something called Elder Ferguson, an uh, infilling of the Holy Ghost. What it means is, when I leave from this church, I normally go home and take a shower. Glory to God to refresh myself. Hallelujah. So tonight, for some of you, you're going to bathe. Some of you ain't going to bathe. But I hope you wake up tomorrow morning and bathe. It means that, glory to God, you got to always be refreshing yourself. And the Bible says, said that after they were filled with the Holy Ghost they went out with signs and wonders demonstrating the power of God and every time they cast out a devil every time they did something powerful every time they did something with great exploits they were losing and they were getting weak along the way so the Bible said they got together one more time and they went back together one more time after the disciples were persecuted they went through persecution and they needed a refreshing and the Bible said they went back after they testify of the goodness of God they went back into a house and they got together one more time in prayer and the place was shaken again and they were filled afresh and anew look at your neighbor say neighbor every now and then life will suck you every now and then troubles will pull you every now and then the warfare, the warfare will weaken you but you need to go back again and get fill again get refresh again somebody shout glory somebody shout glory the Bible said they were filled and a few things happen when you feel the Bible said because they were filled they began to preach the word of God with boldness he said the power you're going to get is going to make you be a witness the power is not to dance the power is for you to preach the power is not to dance. The power is for you to be a witness. He said, when this come on you, when this come in you, you'll be a witness of me in Inagua, Maguana, Cricket Island. Come on, you're Andres. You'll be a witness for me on your job. Can somebody shout within your family life? Hallelujah. When the power comes, there will be exploits. Shout exploits. That's what it means and he said now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think I feel like preaching in here according to the power that works on the inside of you so he empower you to be a witness he empower you to do exploits but he also empower you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover he said I'm gonna put power in you he said I'm gonna fill you and when I fill you no weapon I said no weapon form against you shall be able to prosper that's why he says don't be drunk with wine there is a success but be filled 
with the Holy Ghost. You didn't hear what I'm saying. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, no witch can stop you. No warlock can stop you. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll have joy in your heart. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll have a peace that surpasses all human understanding. I came by to tell you, God sent me here brought me out of my prayer room just to let you know today is your day to be filled shout feel shout feel tell your neighbor say neighbor I need to be filled I'm lying too much I need to be filled I'm sexing too much I need to be filled I'm drinking too much. I need to be filled. I'm jealous, hateful, angry. I'm saved. I'm sealed. But I need the power of the Lord in my life. Anybody in here need the power? Somebody says, somebody says, <clears throat> you can have power without speaking in tongues. That is what my Bible said. My Bible said, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost now, they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost give them utterance. What it means, Dee Dee? I can't teach you to speak in tongues. Oh, bless his name. I can't tell, a, tell you follow after me and say, Shanda, Randa, uh-uh, honey. Hallelujah, let me tell you who fill you. The Holy Ghost. If you yield to him, one of the signs that you got the power, you begin to shundo. He cut up kushata. He cut andalabahusha. He cut up shanda. The liberals and these churches today don't want the power. Hallelujah! They want they want lights, camera, action. But I don't know about you. I want power. Y'all ain't shout like you want power. I want power. Power to live right, power to prophesy right, power to deliver, power to set free, power in my preaching, power in my prophecy, shout power.